dystopian times. On this note of like crazy people, I think that's the perfect segue into our weekly dose of stupidity. And it's very appropriate that we have a doctor on for this week's segment, folks. In a world of politics dominated by the strange, the deranged, and outright insane, we'll now take a moment to shine a light on the craziest of what politics has to offer. This is your weekly dose of stupidity. There's going to be a lot here to unpack when it's done, but we'll just try to get through the whole thing. And this this man right here is going to drop a nuclear take at the end. So uh, wait for it. Great advice, because so many pastors don't want to get involved in these kind of fights. But this really is a fight for religion as well. We know the left uh, is waging war on those who want to believe in God, true, believe in true. religion. Let me play an example <laughs> for you from Joe Biden, uh, just to show you how far this goes. I want to be crystal clear about what's happening in the country today. We have a pandemic of the unvaccinated. That means if you're unvaccinated, you're much more likely to, one, get COVID-19, two, get hospitalized, and three, die if you get it. How dare he? (laughs) Yeah, they're they're playing. uh, This comes straight out of the Marxist handbook. Right, you try to set as many different. I never got that. Yeah, Yeah, I love that. (laughs) We can tear it apart and rebuild it in the image you want. Uh, At first, in America, it was it was racial tension, black versus white. Now we're moving from vaccinated to the unvaccinated, and I'll tell you, it's scary because whenever you see guys saying, you see leaders saying, you can go to the gym if you have the vaccination. You see the president talking about the problem that is the unvaccinated. These things have played out before in history, where you take a certain group of people and demonize them. And I'll tell you what it is. It's a framework for animosity between two groups at best. At it's coming. Worst, it's a framework for a future genocide. We need to stand up and speak out against this kind of stuff. This isn't even FDA approved. It is insanity. Well, look, Pastor, uh, I appreciate you coming on the program with this strong voice. Uh, because I think others will learn from you, and I, I think others who uh, who are pastors as well will learn from this, and their strength in numbers. And so I appreciate you laying it on the line for us. God bless you, sir. We'll talk again soon. Okay, so I just – first question I want to ask, David. After watching that, how could – like, why should I not, like, jump off of a cliff in Roblox? <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> – <laughs> well, luckily, I don't think most people think that way. That I mean, uh, so he, he he claims here that the unvaccinated are, are there's going to be like a genocide of the unvaccinated. They're committing it against themselves by not getting the vaccine. Like, <laughs> right. that's the genocide. You're, and, and comparing it to, to skin color, you're not born with the vaccine. You're, or, like the way you're born black or white. It's, it's so it's so incredibly stupid. I, I can't. This is This is my biggest issue. I did not. I have no conservatives in my family. I didn't grow up conservative. I, I grew up like kind of religious, but not like, you know, completely off off the deep end religious. But um, I don't understand why people can't see through this bullshit. Like, I, I really have a hard time understanding how someone can watch that and be like, that guy's exactly right. You know, uh, being uh, being black, is just like being unvaccinated. Like, uh, how do you how do you make these comparisons with the straight face? I don't understand how people could do this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dr. Heem, I, I've got to ask you because you are like in your this is your field. Um, so how like does your head like is, is it going to explode? Like, I'm honestly oh. speechless. Like, I can't find the words like after okay. after I watched that, my IQ score like dropped significantly. OK, so first of all, quick criticism of Joe Biden here. I don't like that. He said that we have a pandemic of the unvaccinated. That just seems like you're downplaying the term pandemic. There's definitely a better word out there that you can use instead of pandemic of the unvaccinated. So that's just the first thing right away. I'm super um, nitpicky when it comes to vaccine rhetoric and choosing your words carefully. There's a lot of problematic things, not, not just that this guy said, that I've been hearing a lot lately. For example, and I got into politics because I like to watch Jimmy Dore, but he said this recently on Joe Rogan. He said it's a experimental vaccine. Experimental Mm. vaccine to me is one of the most harmful pieces of rhetoric when it comes to vaccine research or this vaccine. Why? Because it was experimental when they were doing human trials. The human trials are now finished. 
Like this no longer an experimental vaccine. We've it's been studied. It's it, 400,000 people en enlisted for I think Pfizer uh phase 3 trial and now it's been like a year since people have been vaccinated. This idea that it's experimental or another one that it's not FDA approved as though mm -hmm. there is some testing that the FDA didn't do or like that they're still expecting to do before they pass the the FDA approval. The FDA approval to, from what I've seen the only difference between the emergency use and the actual FDA approval is like paperwork and um, kind of like bureaucratic uh, things. I, I didn't see any like specific this test wasn't done or something like this. And and I think these kind of things are so dangerous. And, and a lot of people say, how can I be anti-vax? I got the vaccine. You can be anti. You can push anti-vax rhetoric without being a uh, uh, without without actually being anti-vax yourself it's why we, we have to be very responsible when it comes to this stuff and you know there's people even in healthcare that 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 are i don't know like maybe negligent or mm -hmm. not quite as careful as they should be when it comes to the rhetoric on this stuff i debate covid deniers on my stream all the time it's like one of my features uh and it blows my mind that um this kind of stuff is so uh, widely accepted and what really really hurts me is that pro vaccine people aren't charismatic they're not out mm -hmm. here making youtube videos that get shares tons and tons of shares the people who are charismatic are the covid deniers the social media influencers who have a vested in interest in in peddling this misinformation because it gets tons of fucking clicks scientists yep. who are actually doing covid research don't have fucking youtube channels <laughs> to come in and do this shit they so, should, like, maybe they should though. That, I, that should I, I, be part I, of the. Yeah. Yeah. Is on TikTok, think about, okay? think about <laughs> yeah. how we still rely on Bill Nye the Science Guy for a <laughs> lot of our scientific <laughs> communication, and this is actually one of the shortcomings of the scientific community. At, like one of my PhD courses is scientific communication because mm. the scientific community has realized that, like in the last few decades, we've really fucking there's a big gap between lay understanding of science and the scientists um perception of what people understand like people go to you know all kinds of conferences give these crazy elaborate talks but no one's listening because they're so caught up in their own jargon and that's a, a push that's being done in the academic field now is like listen you don't need to be a, uh, the craziest smartest nerd in the world what you need to be able to do is convey your message to people on a stage talk to people and and, and you know have a personality to go along with your facts and i think i hope that like we learn a lot from this pandemic and you know it, this is not going to be the last pandemic probably uh and that we can take some lessons away from this yeah um sarah how about um what are your thoughts on this because i feel like even though i'm i'm relatively desensitized to this kind of like bombastic rhetoric i still like somehow they managed to like out crazy what i thought was like the ceiling like they they burst through that ceiling and i just it, it's really exhausting to the point where there's so much misinformation like w what he was talking about it's hard to keep up right because i'm i mean i certainly have been trying to tackle um anti-vax um sentiment on my channel i know david has been doing that as well it's just it's so hard because one of one of the issues with um anti-vax people and i've seen this firsthand is that if you show them like a humanist report or a david dole video or if you show, uh, if you send them like these debates with Dr. Him, who I'm sure like obviously is prevailing in these debates, it still doesn't matter because it's about trust and they're not going to trust someone who they don't know. And so people in my family who are conservative, who are anti-vax, they didn't actually change their mind until they saw firsthand how COVID affected one of our family members. And, you know, it, it's things like that. So I, I don't I, I think that public health messaging is is super complex. And, and he touched on it. it's like the CDC had this issue with, you know, the, the mask mandate and whatnot before Delta hit the United States, how to draft uh, public health messaging that's concise and clear and doesn't drive more hysteria. But, Sarah, what are what is your thoughts on um, on, on overall like? The level of ferocity of anti-vaxxers in the United States, I feel like it's it's making me feel stupid. So there's, I have like so many thoughts, and some of my takes are about to be a little spicy. So I'm I'm sorry, everybody. Um, how about it? We love I, spice. I mean, I, I say I'm sorry, but am I really sorry? Um, I'm not. Don't be sorry. So like one of the things that like this, just hearing the clip, like it's always these like 
white conservative men who are like, we're on the brink of genocide. It's going to be a tool of genocide. Um, this concept of like governmental genocide is like, you don't think about it in these terms, but like, it's so deeply rooted in the concept of white supremacy. Like, it's not that they think there's going to be like a genocide. It's that they're so afraid of losing that inherent white privilege that they equate having to do anything responsible or having to be responsible for anything, including like their own bodies and their neighbors that like they equate that with like a loss of privilege and they don't view it as like they, they, they couch it in these like sneaky white supremacist terms, to, like scare people into not getting the vaccine. And like a lot of people really haven't done the internal work to like recognize that stuff and learn to dismantle their internalized white supremacy, learn to dismantle their internalized misogyny. Um, and like, you know, we find it on the left too. Like you have anti-vaxxer leftists too. And like people think they adopt this label of leftist and they're like, I'm good. I don't have to do the work anymore. But like, they don't do that inner soul work of like, oh my gosh, like, is this, how is this um, enable, en enabling white supremacist um, systems in America? Because ultimately people of color are the ones that are dying and suffering the most um, because of the, because of COVID. So when you hear these like, oh, it's going to create tools for genocide, they're really just talking about a loss of white privilege and a loss of whiteness. Um, but there is like a liberal question buried in here. Like, I know we all hate the word liberal and I mean like politically liberal question here. And it is worth asking about it. And I think it's ultimately what these people are trying to get to is like the concept of government overreach is really more what they're they're talking about. But it's so couched in fear of vaccines and all this vaccine fear mongering. Because um, like people's if you read George Lake off, he talks about how like people's conservative fear centers are literally bigger in their brains than liberals. Like there are actual like biochemical differences in the brains. It's so cool. Read George Lakoff. Um, so you get this, like these people that are like, they're actually trying to ask the question about government overreach more than they're trying to talk about like the vaccines. And like, this is where I start to get people's like, you're so scared of it being like microchipped and stuff like that. But like, ultimately this tech bro stuff that we worship is already overreach. The NSA is already overreach. Like if you're going to talk about like these overreaches into our health, the government getting involved in vaccinations, like you are walking around tagging yourself, paying off every cell phone tower. The government could turn on your Alexa and find your Netflix history if they want. Like you've already, and now people are, these same people are also screaming to put cameras in schools so we can watch what our kids are being taught. Like they're asking for more facial recognition software. They've stopped talking about like the hyper militarization of the police as like a, a, a national security issue. And like, we've allowed ourselves to be stripped of these securities that like, they're kind of, they're, they're struggling to reconcile. Like the, the problem is actually their question of government overreach, but they can't like understand that we've already allowed it to happen. And this is just a version of government overreach that's creating public good. Because at the end of the day, like forcing people to get vaccinated, if, if we're being honest, really isn't even about the unvaccinated people getting vaccinated. It's about the healthcare workers that have to be manning those beds around the clock. They have to be doing that work. Nurses are quitting left and right. Um, we're you should, losing healthcare. You should see staff. how low the morale in the hospital has been it's the entire horrible. pandemic. Because we used to look at each other in the hallways and smile or, you know, a quick chat. Now everyone's masked up. Everyone's working crazy hours. We're social distancing in our offices. So the morale has been brutal and and like yeah it's it's been a yeah. it's been very taxing on on i mean and listen i don't even work in the covid i'm a, I, I do research so like i can only imagine if someone had to wear the face shield the mask the uh, the, uh, everything for the you know endless hours it's uh like 15 it's... hour days and like it's and we're losing healthcare staff left and right and like and people didn't understand the beginning either like because they didn't literally see people dying in the streets of their city they didn't understand that hospitals were overwhelmed and the the reason we were masking and quarantining wasn't because people were like collapsing it wasn't like the stand where people are coughing themselves to death and then they're dying in the streets it's that they're dying in the hallways of these hospitals but we're removed from that. So we didn't see it. And the healthcare staff were burning out and frying. And that's why it was so hard for people to make that decision and start trying to pretend it was about government overreach. But like, the the right is so good at fear messaging. Like, Heem, I love that you're talking about like healthcare messaging and like, really getting in there as scientists because I as much as I love my science, my friends that do like science work, I'm like, I love They're you. Boring. You should never speak yeah. in front of a crowd. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
<laughs> you know, like the speaking energy of like a piece of toast. And I love well, those people and, no offense, but like <laughs> it's not just the energy too. It's also like the, it, the some of the concepts are really difficult to explain if you haven't actually thought about how you would explain it to like a fourth grader or something like that you know what i mean yeah I, like if i come out here i'm like yeah you need to have the mrna be trans uh, and then you need the spike protein and the antigens <laughs> like people are just like one in one year out the other year right i want to give you guys uh in my recent covid debates i've been using this example and i like it a lot and i'll hand this over to you guys you can use it in your future uh covid discussions i uh tell people you don't trust the government on this covid stuff right they're like yeah i'm like okay what about if the government sent you an alert on your phone right now and they were like, listen, we have had a nuclear accident and there's radiation in the air and everyone is exposed and you need to evacuate right now. Would you would you think it's OK for a mother to tell her child, don't worry, I don't feel the radiation on my skin. We're not going to listen to them. And, and most of them are like, no, that's not right. And then I'm like, okay, so now let's draw the comparison <laughs> to show you why this is one-to-one. -one. Hmm. And um, I, I find that that works very well because once you start to distrust the system of government, you can, it's like a slippery slope or like, you know, if you, once you start to distrust the establishment, it's a slippery slope and I can draw you to some crazy conclusions from there. And I think that like, that is a good rhetorical tactic to use to say, listen, if you don't trust this, what do you trust? How do you know that insulin will work if you have diabetes? You don't know that. Like you didn't actually look at what do you, how do you know what's in the side of anything? Right. If people say what's in the inside. So like these kind of discussions I think are nice. And sometimes I find people who are pro-vax, no offense to us. But we're a little dismissive, um, too dismissive, too quick. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we should be a little bit more patient. Um, and, you know, if people take baby steps to get there, I, I like it. Um, and I'm for that. There's a certain segment of, of this discussion that I feel like it, maybe it's not as big as I, I, I think it is. But there are people who are apolitical or maybe even on the left who are anti-vax. And that's because they have this fear of big pharma. And mm -hmm. I mean, I, I covered a video a couple of weeks ago where... There was a somebody who was a, a pharmaceutical researcher and she was anti-vax and she was in the hospital with COVID-19. And now she realized she should have got the vaccine, but she was anti-vax as a pharmaceutical researcher. And, you know, you make the connection here. These people are hyper aware of how destructive big pharma has been, but then apply that to everything, including vaccines, even though they're backed up by science, even though we see in the real world, people in the hospital are unvaccinated. They still have this fear of big pharma that almost overtakes everything else. And Good I mean, logic. Yeah, but the, right. like the, there's someone in my life who the, the, the close uh, member of my family and and she's a nurse and she's also anti-vax and it's mm -hmm. and she's not conservative. She's, you know, she's left, she's or she's apolitical, but but it's she has a skepticism of big pharma and I understand that aspect of it and I think if we if we talk to these people at least that section of it, talk to them in a way where we understand, yes, big pharma has had this destruction, but we have to look at, you know, the real world impact right now of the vaccine, the, what it's had. I mean, clearly it's brought the numbers down and now people that are in the hospital are unvaccinated. We have to be able to, you know, make these connections and not have our fear of one thing apply to every aspect of the industry. And you know what's actually, I, I would even take it a step further. I would say, yeah, pharmaceutical companies, all they, they care about is money. What's the good way to make money to make an effective vaccine? What's a really yeah, bad way to right. make money to make a vaccine that doesn't work? Look at what happened to AstraZeneca after two people got a, a tummy ache or something, right? Like the, mm -hmm. the that that this, like this is like all eyes are on these these pharma companies. They will do everything more than any other time in, in their history of their company to make sure that those vaccines are effective because they want to make money. So it doesn't have to be like this. Um, oh, they're changing their motive. No, their motive is still to make money, and they will do that by making an effective vaccine. And I think that is like a good way to push back on that.